Hello you lovely bastards. Welcome back to Fixing Rusty Stuff Tools for Men. Everybody knows electricians love strippers. What? No, I'm not talking about those kinds of strippers, you dirty minded degenerates. Get your perverted brains out of the gutter. I'm talking about wire strippers. Mostly. Whether you're an Avigo Harry DIYer who likes electrocuting himself in his spare time, an apprentice electrician who's too embarrassed to ask the battle hardened Sparky's on site for advice, he asked me what a hammer was, lads. <laughs> <laughs> or just a proper manly man who gets his kicks watching tall videos on YouTube. Oh, yeah. Tools. This one's for you. Today we're going balls deep into strippers, figuratively speaking. We'll cover the different types, their functions, what kinds of cables they're best suited for, and lastly, how to strip better than a lap dancer at Spearmint Rhino. If you want to dive a bit deeper into installing sockets and switches, check out the wire in a man cave link in the word box below. Otherwise, grab your insulated gloves, cup of tea, tub of KY jelly, and prepare yourself for an electrifying video. Because over the next 10 minutes, I'm going to wring as much content water as humanly possible out of the electrician's favourite tool, and pour it into the gutter of the interwebs to keep the sewer rats of YouTube entertained. That's you by the way. If you want to jump straight into the juicy stuff, skip to the part of the video that makes you wetter than a mackerel in a monsoon. For all you other lovely bastards, like a swimming pool full of muff juice, let's dive into it. Insulation is the rubbery stuff on electrical cable that stops the wire electrifying everything it comes into contact with, including you. Wire stripping refers to the art of removing that insulation, preferably without completely fucking up the integrity of the conductor inside. If you want to get power from A to B without electrocuting your C, you need to expose the metal ends properly to make good solid connections. Way back in the 1880s, the first electrical cable insulation was made from tree sap called gutter percha. Shortly after this shock in time, technology had advanced so much that they used a far more futuristic material, paper. The mad bastards came up with some great ideas back then. Nothing screams safety like wrapping live wires in something that turns to ash in seconds. If you thought that was totally f***ing mental and that things couldn't get any dafter, they then decided it would be a good idea to use cloth, and of all things, asbestos. <coughs> because apparently lung rot was a fair trade for keeping your house powered back in the day. Thankfully by the 1930s they'd finally come to their senses and started using rubber. As manufacturing advanced, in the 50s cable companies began using PVC, and in today's modern world, depending on the usage, materials such as PVC and cross-linked polyurethane, or XLPE as the pros call it, are widely used. As electrical cable evolved, consequently, so have the tools used to strip it. Back in the day when electricians were real men, they used nothing but a simple knife to cut the insulation off cables. In fact, some old timers still do, probably out of stubbornness, nostalgia, or a deep-seated resentment for the dexterity that having five fingers gives you. But for those of us who prefer for our digits intact, modern tools make the job quicker, easier, and far less likely to end with a trip to A&E. And that brings me to my favourite, my CK side cutters. If you're on price work, second fixing houses on site, these magic little fuckers can take price work from a minimum wage enterprise to what colours your Bugatti. The Swiss army knife for wire strippers, these simple looking side cutters actually have four functions. Let me explain by using some twin and earth cable. Firstly, the pointy cutting tip allows you to get into some tight spaces. So cutting the outer sheath of the wire, that's function one. Function number two, here's where these side cutters show off their engineering genius. Those two little half moons on the cutting blade, they're perfectly sized to strip 1.5 and 2.5 mil cable with zero effort. Just pop the wire into the correct hole, pull up and watch that insulation slide off smoother than you slide your own flaccid baby maker into a tub of miniature KY jelly. Sometimes you'll need to double the wire over to give it a bit more strength. No problem for function number three. Just use this handy little slot underneath to form a perfectly folded wire end, neater than a well manicured lady garden. Well, what Lady Garden did you think I was referring to, you bloody perverts? Finally, the pièce de résistance, trimming down 3.5mm faceplate screws. Have you ever gone to fit a socket and found the screws way too long? Normally, you'd have to piss about with a grinder or axle, but with these little beauties, you just fuck the screw into one of these holes, squeeze the cutters with the same pressure you squeeze your wife's ass to let her know it's Friday night fun time, 
and Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your dad's sister. The screw should fit better than your Johnson in a custom made condom. The best part, it doesn't destroy the thread. So unlike your last Tinder date, you can screw it very easily. These are best for flat twin and earth cable and they come in two sizes. One for us men and a smaller size for apprentices and little girls. The best safety feature that these beauties boast is that they're insulated to a thousand volts. So if you're a careless sparky who enjoys a game of is it live, or you just like cutting through live cables for the free fireworks display, you can rest easy knowing these wire scissors have got your back. In fact, I can personally vouch for their insulating capabilities. As you can see, I've already blown these ones up when a knuckle dragging painter decided to switch the fuse board back on while I was wiring a boiler. Apart from a loud bang and blinding flash, I didn't feel a thing. Thanks CK, I owe you one. Now CK is the first choice for any sparky worth their proverbial salt. It's typical good old high quality German engineering. In fact, their tools are so good, it almost makes you forgive them for trying to take over half of Europe twice. For my Fiora and fuzzy sausages. Almost, you bratwurst munching warmongers. Anyway, this next one is also CK. These are referred to as croppers by the pros, and while they don't have the multitasking functionality of a two headed octopus hyped up on Red Bull like their red and yellow cousins, they do make up for it with sheer brute strength. The kind of raw power usually reserved for Russian bricklayers or removal men on a Saturday job. Let's finish up, lads. It's almost one o'clock. These copper munching slices have got so much muscle, they'll cut through 25mm meter tails like pooper scooper through runny dog shit. They're ideal for extra beefy cable like earth bonding, and they make light work of 6mm string cable for the solar boys. They'll cut through anything. They're sharper than a Damascus steel samurai sword, and I'm not embarrassed to say I've given myself a pretty hefty gash on a couple of occasions. Not the good kind of gash that's attached to a drunk lady, the kind of gash that pisses up blood and makes your apprentice go pale. While they don't have the neat little wire stripping holes like their house bashing counterparts, they do have two sections which can be used for both stripping and cutting, and make removing insulation on larger cables easier than pulling my ex-wife on a Friday night, and that means very f***ing easy. Since they're built for heavier duty work, if you're working on an industrial site, these are your best mate, but maybe not ideal for use by domestic sparks. Now they're not insulated, so unless you fancy a trip to the final job site in the sky, make sure you've done your safe isolation and properly locked off the fuse board. Or at the very least, that there ain't any knuckle-dragging painters lurking around trying to kill you. And now, time for a brief intermission while you click the like and subscribe buttons, and I share a story about my ex-wife. My ex-wife was on a golf course one day while I was having a beer in a clubhouse. She hadn't been playing long when she returned early telling me she'd got stung by a bee. When I asked her whereabouts, she told me it was between the first and second hole. Knowingly, I replied, Well, you should try closing your legs for once, darling. Okay, next up we have these Inspector Gadget looking contraptions. Another CK special, automatic wire strippers. These bad boys are like the Swiss Army knife for Sparkies. If the Swiss Army was entirely made up of blokes who drink Stella and tell their missus they'll be home in an hour but end up in the pub till closing time. They're great for flex cable and price work, saving you time, which means less grafting, more tea drinking, and an early finish if the boss ain't on site. They're more for technician oriented sparkies who like their tools to have more features than their missus vibrator. Up top you've got the cable stripping function, complete with a depth gauge that literally no one ever uses. I broke mine off years ago and shockingly my life hasn't fallen apart just yet. They do have a limit on cable size when it comes to stripping, but the pressure can be increased or decreased by turning this tiny knob. Insert your own apprentice based joke here. Just stick the cable in, give it a squeeze, and the insulation is magically removed. Now at the bottom we've got a cutting function that's about as useful as a blunt spoon. These jaws have the bite force of a pensioner with loose dentures. Oh, not again. So don't rely on them for anything serious. And for you delicate types who like things colour coded, these can crimp more different types of lugs than you can shake a stick at. Complete with instructions for cable size for the especially retarded among us. Last up we have these wire stripping pliers. 
They're the only strippers that aren't CK, and the reason I got them is that they were included in a set of other tools. A bit like that weird cousin that gets the obligatory invite to family weddings. They're basically the hod carrying ogre of the stripping world. They can only do one thing, and they can't even do that very well. Now, I've never actually seen anyone use these on site, because let's be honest, why would you waste precious tool bag space on a pair of strippers that only have one function that they aren't even actually good at? I wouldn't even recommend these to a DIY and weekend warrior, or an apprentice. In fact, the only advantage they have is that they're adjustable for different wire sizes, but they can't remove out of sheaths, only the insulation on the actual wire, so they're about as useful as a vegan butcher. They're adjusted using this grub screw to widen and narrow the jaws to the cable size needed. You then clamp down on a wire and give it a pull. You need to be careful not to damage the conductor if you haven't adjusted them to the right gauge depth though. But saying that, they are pretty basic to use. Anyway, your granddad might have a pair of these, or maybe you'll see them at an antique fair or a boot sale. But other than that, if you're buying some wire strippers, don't be a tight ass. Treat yourself and splash out on a decent pair of multifunction CKs or croppers. Okay, now we've gone through the different types of wire strippers, like a 20 year old lap dancer trying to pay her way through college, let's get stripping. Firstly, we'll look at twin and earth using the side cutters. Cut into the middle of the outer sheath, grab the earth wire inside and give it a wank. Sorry, sorry, I mean give it a yank. Decapitate the cable foreskin as close to the grommet as possible, slot the 1.5 or 2.5 mil cable into the correct hole and slide the insulation off like it's your wife's knickers on payday. Croppers strip flat twin and earth by using the big cutting blades to strip the outer sheath. Be careful with the pressure applied here or you'll damage the insulation or conductor inside if you're too heavy handed. Use the bottom cutting blades for the outer sheath and the smaller top blades for stripping the wire insulation. Like silicone breasts, don't squeeze too hard or you'll cause damage. The automatic wire strippers are slightly different. Poke the cable in from the side and give them a squeeze. They're not great for removing the outer sheath and you'll probably have to, ahem, tug it off the rest of the way manually, but for wire insulation it should come right off unless you want a particularly long bare conductor at the end. Due to the multifunctionality, I'd say the side cutters are best for flat twin and earth. Simple, quick, and they won't leave you weeping in frustration like a woman doing DIY. For flexi cable, you'll want to use a croppers or the automatic wire stripper. With croppers, run the large blades around the outer sheath and pull it off the cable, then use the smaller blades for the insulation. Again, being careful not to cut too deep. The automatic wire strippers are much the same as with the twin and earth, with the strippers doing all the heavy lifting for you. Adjust the pressure using the knob for the insulation once you've removed the outer sheath. For singles, meter towels and solar cable, side cutters will be useless for stripping and the automatic strippers will only be able to handle the smaller gauge cable. So it's got to be croppers for these. They remove the outer sheath from meter towels like a dream and strip the insulation off pretty well too. The automatic wire strippers work well on the smaller stuff, but you can't beat the versatility of the croppers. Well, you lovely bastards, I hope that's helped you figure out what tool to use for your electrical project. If you found that in the slightest bit entertaining, strip the insulation on that like button, remove the outer sheath on the subscription button, share it with your favourite bratwurst munching warmonger. Today, we dine on victory and sausages! And stay tuned for the next instalment of Fixing Rusty Stuff, Tools for Men.